Hello everyone, my name is Hasan Türken. I'm a platform engineer at Upbound. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about how we are using Crossplane to, to provision and manage our own infrastructure. And uh, also talk about why Crossplane is a great tool to construct building blocks for cloud deployments. Upbound Cloud offers a hosting solution for Crossplane. And when you go to Upbound Cloud and log into the console, you will get the screen where you can create and manage uh, control planes. And a control plane is actually a dedicated crossplane instance running under the hood. And what happens when you hit the create control plane button here is closely related to uh, what I will talk about in this talk. And this is why I wanted to start with this slide. So here you can see a high level overview of our uh, deployment model for hosted crossplanes. Uh, a hosted crossplane uh, con uh, contains a dedicated Kubernetes API server backed by etcd, and crossplane and crossplane providers are configured against this API server such that they can operate on the API resources living this this API server. Uh, we are also configuring this API server against Vault uh, so that it can use it as, as a KMS provider. And uh, this way uh, we, we can encrypt the uh, Kubernetes secrets before writing them into etcd instead of storing them as plain text. Here you can see we are running multiple instances of hosted crossplanes on each host cluster, but uh, we also have a defined capacity of host clusters, and when we have, uh, when we reach to, or when we reach to that capacity, uh, we are dynamically provisioning new host clusters. And this is the responsibility of the scheduling operator, and uh, it needs to get new uh, or uh, like trigger the creation of new host clusters when when we reach the, to the capacity. So. As mentioned, uh, for encryption at rest, uh, we need a production grade vault deployment. What, uh, what we mean by production grade, uh, it needs to be highly available. It needs to be backed uh, by a bucket as a storage backend. And we are using uh, Google Cloud for our infrastructure right now. And uh, this needs to be a GCS bucket then. Uh, and uh, since we don't want to, uh, like we don't want to require any manual intervention with by while operating this uh, host clusters or that Bolt instance. Uh, we we want to uh, configure auto unseal with Cloud KMS so that we don't need to seal uh, Vault when it let's say when the pod gets restarted for some reason. Uh, and uh, since this Vault instance will need to uh, consume Google Cloud services like buckets and uh, encryption keys, it needs to authenticate uh, Google Cloud. And uh, Google recommends using GCP workload identity to authenticate workloads running in uh, Google Cloud uh, Kubernetes, Google Kubernetes engine. So we also want to use uh, enable and use uh, GCP workload identity here. And finally, of course, uh, we want to have like all uh, communication as encrypted, and we want to have like we want to deploy uh, Vault as TLS enabled. So uh, remember, our host cluster has a Vault instance, and we want to dynamically provision host clusters. So we need to automate this deployment. And since our scheduling operator is responsible for dynamically provisioning when, when we reach to the capacity of existing ones, we need an API for our scheduling operator so that it can just request a new uh, host cluster with Vault. Yeah, as, as mentioned, like our scheduling operator needs an API and it will just say, give me a production ready Vault. So here I want to uh, go through the provisioning flow for, for such a deployment. Uh, so first of all, we need to interact with Google Cloud APIs and create a, a GCS bucket for storage. Uh, we need to create KMS keyring and a crypto key in this keyring for auto unseal. Uh, we need to create a service account and uh, for, for the vault uh, servers. And then uh, we need to 
grant access to the service account so that it can access to the previously created resources. And finally, we need to create a GKE cluster so that we can run our world servers on it. And also note that we need to configure this GKE cluster as workload identity enabled so that we can use GCP workload identity. And final step of this deployment is actually deploying the vault itself. And while deploying vault, we are using the vault helm chart and uh, we need to provide uh, these, uh, the, these, the names of the uh, cloud resources that we have created as, as Helm parameters. So you can see like we are passing the bucket name, uh, key ring name, crypto key name, uh, and also we are passing the uh, service account as an annotation so that uh, it can authenticate with workload identity. Also note that like there is a tight coupling between the infrastructure and application. Uh, and like we need to consider this as a whole rather than just uh, infrastructure application. I would like to talk a bit about evolution of cloud deployment so far. In the beginning, when the cloud providers started providing services, we were going to their UIs and creating cloud resources by clicking a couple of buttons there. They also provided CLIs interacting with their cloud APIs, but except shell scripting, there were no meaningful or feasible way of automation. With the emergence of infrastructure as code tools like Terraform, Ansible, and Chef, we get better ways of automation, but we still lack of an API, which we could use to provide this automation to the consumers. And here comes Crossplane, Crossplane both enables automation of like deployment and management of cloud resources, but it also allows an API so that the consumers can just create these resources or even manage them. So coming back to our original example, which is uh, deploying a production ready vault on GKE, I would like to show a couple of repositories. So this one is like kind of corresponds to the first phase of like cloud deployment, which is uh, making that deployment deployment using CLI step by step. Uh, and the next one that I would like to show is uh, like following the same deployment model in the previous uh, repository. This repository automates it with Terraform. And now I would like to introduce this one, which is uh, like making the same deployment using Crossplane, which enables making the same deployment using Crossplane. Uh, and this repository contains the necessary compositions, Crossplane compositions to achieve such a deployment. And once we like, uh, once we deploy this configuration in a Kubernetes cluster that, that that have cross-plane running, we have an API resource, uh, like we have an API resource, which we can just create and expect it to be uh, up and running. So coming back to like our deployment model with hosted for hosted cross-planes, uh, as you remember, you might remember, we have a scheduling operator there and this scheduling operator needs to uh, dynamically provision host clusters with like production ready vault. And having cross-plane API, which is powered by Kubernetes API, uh, enables us such a like clear separation of concern. And our scheduling operator could just request a host cluster. And then by polling that API or like watching that, that resource, it can just get notified when the resource is ready. Another advantage of like using, uh, like another advantage of uh, using Kubernetes API here is we can just uh, use existing tooling and machinery around Kubernetes API. So we could, for example, use kubectl to interact with these resources and we could like build a, an operator and use controller runtime uh, to, to manage those resources. So 
let's have a closer look what happens when we create a resource, uh, a cross plane resource. So you might remember the like right hand side, which is uh, the provisioning flow for such a, uh, for our example application. And uh, on the left hand side, uh, we, we see that like uh, we have a composition which contains the required managed resources. These managed resources are, in this case, are uh, like GCP resources, or uh, we are also, we also have Bolt release, Helm release as a managed resource. And uh, like all of these resources are composed in a, in a composition called Vault cluster. And when we create a Vault cluster custom resource, then cross-plane composition controllers goes and creates corresponding managed resources. And then the, uh, the corresponding providers acts on that and uh, like creates and manage those, those resources on cloud or on the cluster. Having a control plane and resources living in the same API enables building new resources on top of existing ones. I think most of us are familiar with the relationship between pods, replica sets, and deployments. Replica sets are built on top of pods and deployments are built on top of replica sets. So with cross-plane, we can represent everything as a Kubernetes resource. And just like the relationship between any Kubernetes resource, here, we can also build new resources on top of existing ones. For example, in the, in the figure, you can see like my cluster resource is like co contains uh, other existing resources like network, subnetwork, a GKE cluster, and a couple of node pools. And there is another uh, like resource called my vault, which contains the required cloud resources, as well as a Helm release, which is also a like managed resource. Uh, and again, we can continue building new resources by combining these newly constructed building blocks. So we can say that with crossplane, each and every resource or each and every uh, cloud resource is just a block. And we can build new blocks by combining, like by composing new uh, resources thanks to cross-plane composition. Okay, it's time for demo. And in the demo, I will create this custom resource, which is created by a composite resource definition. And I, uh, we will expect that uh, all of the required cloud resources to be created by cross-plane providers and a like production ready world is deployed on, on the like newly created GKE cluster. Okay, uh, let's start with the demo. Uh, I have a local uh, kind cluster and I have crossplane installed before the demo. Uh, and uh, I will now start by deploying the configuration package, which is uh, like built from the repository that I showed in the presentation. So, Let's start with installing it. Uh, let's check how it goes. Yeah, here you can see that Vault on GKE configuration package is installed uh, and ready. Uh, this configuration package contains the composition, uh, compositions and uh, like composite resource definitions uh, that, that we need for Vault deployment. Uh, and now the next the next step is uh, like deploying the uh, our resource. Uh, since we will use a provider GCP, we will need to create this provider config, which refers to a Kubernetes secret uh, in in uh, named as GCP credits. I have created that secret uh, prior to demo, so let's create this provider config as well. Uh, okay, and the next step is uh, actually creating a network co composite resource. And now we can create a vault cluster uh, composite resource that, that I showed at the end of the demo. So now let's see what we have. 
CTL gets more clusters. Our custom resource uh, is created and let's check what uh, managed resources we have for this composite resource. Yeah, here you can see that uh, like out of managed resources created, GK cluster, notable service accounts, keyring, crypto key, crypto key policy, buckets, policies for buckets, etc. And uh, let's also check the cloud console. Yeah, as you can see, uh, a, like Kubernetes cluster is uh, being provisioned right now. Uh, and since this will take a while, I would like to uh, like go to, uh, to, to the repository and we can use this time to go over the configuration uh, in that repository. So like we have uh, multiple compositions here. Uh, and uh, like, let's start with the GKE composition. Uh, this composition contains a like a GKE cluster resource provided by provider GCP and uh, contains a node pool resource again provided by provider GCP. This composition also contains one last resource, which is a provider config resource, uh, which is uh, going to be used by provider Helm so that it can make the deployment to, to that, like to this newly provisioned GKE cluster. So when this composite resource is ready, we will have a provider conf config pointing to, to that cluster. So the next composite resource uh, or the next composition is uh, the one that named as Vault. And this in this uh, composition, uh, we are creating like uh, a lot of GCP resources. One is for like service accounts, key ring, crypto key, crypto key policy, service account policy, bucket, bucket policy members. And we have uh, two helm releases here. Uh, one, uh, this helm release is just to uh, like to deploy TLS secrets for for Vault uh, servers, and we are using the uh, like capability of uh, Helm Shark to to pro to create uh, certificates. Uh, this Helm Shark contains nothing but just a TLS secret which will deploy uh, like Vault TLS secret. Uh, but this Vault based Helm Shark could be used further, like if for example you want to enable network policies you can like put your network policies here in this chart. Or if you want to run some like pre-install configuration script or job, then you can uh, like put your uh, manifest in this uh, hand release. This is quite convenient. So, and finally we have our actual hand release, which will deploy the vault itself. And uh, here you can see we are using the official vault helm chart. And uh, we are providing uh, chart values here. And since uh, we will need to use dynamically created uh, like resource names, we can ju just mention, for example, GCP bucket name here. Rather, we need to patch patch it from the uh, like uh, composite resource. So let's see. Uh, let's take a look for an example. I think. The, the best example is this one. So here you can see that we need to pass, for example, bucket name, and we need to pass like project name, key ring, and crypto key name. By the way, we are using a single key ring, but we are creating uh, multiple crypto keys under this uh, key ring. So dynamically created crypto key name uh, will be fed here. And we are uh, doing this by using the like, uh, cross-plane composition patches. And also I would like to mention that at the, si at the time of this uh, recording, uh, it was like there was an open PR to which enables uh, multiple input compositions. And this, uh, I'm making the demo from that open PR and uh, like that, that uh, PR enables such uh, patches. Um, yeah, so 
these two compositions that we had a look. But as I mentioned in the like presentation, uh, the cool thing is once you define your compositions and composite resources at uh, Kubernetes API, you can go for further and create more compositions by combining them. So this composition actually uh, defines a new type called world clusters, and it combines the previously defined uh, compositions. So this is a composition of previous two compositions, which like composes a GKE, which contains the like GKE cluster, not pool, uh, and provider config for Helm, and also it contains Walt's composition. Uh, yeah, so let's have a quick look how our deployment is going. So yeah, it looks great. So as you can see, uh, all of the resources seems to be ready and synced. Uh, so this means that our composed resource should also be uh, like, yeah, our composite resource is also ready. Let's also check our Helm releases. So that, yeah, he, here you can see that Helm releases are uh, like actual Helm release is deployed on the like GKE cluster. Okay, let's connect to that Kubernetes cluster. Uh, let's system namespace. And yeah. Yeah, as you can see, all Vault uh, clusters, uh, Vault uh, pods are up and running, uh, and they report it as ready, which means that they are uh, unsealed. Uh, maybe we can also check the Vault configuration from one of, like one of them. Yeah, so here you can see that uh, Vault Vault server configuration, uh, like it is configured for using this. Uh, KMS crypto key, uh, this key ring, uh, and uh, like HA is available with uh, GCS storage. Um, yeah, and uh, if I could scroll down, yeah, and as you can see, like Vault is unsealed. Okay, yeah, so that's the end of my demo. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, if you have. Uh, so thanks for joining my session.